all right everybody we're back with another how-to video and i really hope this one uh helps y'all as metal detectorists um because if you've been doing metal detecting for any length of time you probably know about electrolysis and you probably use it to clean coins and stuff like that coins tokens some jewelry um but if you're into big relics like uh, Civil War relics or anything big iron relics, you've got to have like a 12 volt battery charger pushing some amperage. Now mostly we just stick to small coins and we use these little old drill chargers or a wall pack. You only need like 9 volts DC or so to clean your coins and stuff. But if you're cleaning big iron we're going to need some amperage and if if y'all have tried to use these automatic battery chargers you know they do not work for electrolysis you have to use an old manual charger and these things are getting harder and harder to find um, i've had this one for literally 20 years and it finally bit the dust of uh, the the transformer it's uh, the windings and the transformer finally burned up um it burnt the diodes and i thought that's all it was so i replaced the diodes but uh we're not getting 12 volts ac out of the transformer so it's fried um for those that don't know this is the rectifier plate and them diodes and the rectifier plate is what changes it to dc um so the problem with these um let me get the camera set up here the problem with these automatics is when you hook these to a battery to be charged they try to sense the battery and they want to know there's a battery there um so we got power you can see that the unit's on and i'm going to turn on my meter and show you that we have nothing can y'all see my meter no my hands in the way all right let's, there we go all right so we got nothing because it's not sensing the battery now you may be thinking well it's got a switch that says manual well it was on manual and it still has nada automatic it's not going to have anything because it's not sensing the battery so you still got nothing Okay, so I don't even know what this manual, I mean, these things aren't even good for charging batteries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna convert this to full manual. When you plug it in, you will get 12 volts no matter what. And that's the way these have to work for electrolysis. All right, so in order to open these up, I'm going to unplug it, get the wires out of the way. Um, they got four screws in the back, one, two, three, four. And on these Everstarts that are not safety screws, you don't have to have the safety or the security tool to open those. They just got standard Phillips screws. I've already taken them out to save time. So the Everstarts, they just separate just like this and the uh, transformers don't bolt in they simply slide into a plastic slot so you just work it out and now you can kind of get this thing open the wires are a little short but you'll be able to get it open enough to see what's going on inside now for electrolysis all we need is 110 volts coming in 12 volts ac coming out and we need the rectifier plate to change it to DC. We need a safety mechanism. And we definitely need an amp meter because you need to know how hot you're mixing your electrolysis solution. And if you don't know about that yet or you're just getting into this, the more of the baking soda or the washing soda, whatever you're using, the more you mix into your solution, the more amp you're pulling, and the more amps you're pulling, the more aggressive you're cleaning your relic. So you, you, you need to make sure that whatever charger you're converting does have a meter on it so you can at least do that. Now these, 
these automatic ever starts they seem to be everywhere this one was given to me because the guy said this thing don't work and i've already converted another one um, and it works great so the problem with these where the where you run into your trouble with trying to use these type for electrolysis it's this circuit board right here So what we need to do with this circuit board is get rid of it and bypass it. Now the way I did my other battery charger, I would call that a destructive conversion because I just ripped everything out I didn't need and I made it full manual and that's the way it's going to be. Um, there are, I think, you could do this very simply in a way that you could put this back. And I don't know why you'd want to. These things are inherently bad to start with. Um, and there's another uh, option you could have to where you could add a second positive lead where the lead itself is full manual. With the, And you put all this back together and still have your two automatic uh, wired leads, but you're going to have... A full manual lead that you would have to watch out for if you're charging a battery it's going to be hot all the time so you'd have to label it full manual you'd have to keep up with it I don't recommend that unless you're really good or diligent about keeping up with stuff and I'm not so um, all we really need to do is take the circuit board out and then the, our 12 volt lead is hooked to that circuit board you can see it right up under here. Let me see if I can get this a little closer. So you need to take this 12 volt lead off. Now what throws some people off is the fact that if we take the 12 volt lead off and we get rid of this circuit board, where does this lead go? Well on battery chargers, and I'm just going through this because you're, you may not be using an EverStart. So what you have is you have 12 volts AC coming out of this transformer and it goes to this this whole plate is the rectifier plate and it's converted to DC with these diodes and the rectifier itself is a contact point. If you look close, you can see that they have a connection here. So to make this work, you can pull this thing out and you basically bolt this lead to this plate, anywhere on this plate, and you now have a full manual battery charger and the amp gauge will still work. So I haven't tested this theory, but I'm thinking you could leave this in here, uh, screw a blade terminal to this plate and just plug this in but I'm just not real clear on what this board's gonna be doing in the background. So you can experiment with that if you want to, but in this conversion, we're taking this board out and we're chunking it. Cause I'm never using this as a, a battery charger. You know, we got one of the big box ones on wheels that we use around the farm. This is going to be for electrolysis. So let's get started taking all this out and you can just see how I did it. Okay, to make it easier on yourself, if you're doing an EverStart, um, they have two tabs right here that will release this whole plate and you can get it out and work with it. So it's very simple. So now we get, uh, we can move that out of the way and we got access to this whole plate. If you're not working on an EverStart, uh, just remember that where your diodes are, that is going to be your rectifier plate. And whatever terminal is hooked to your sensing circuit that makes these automatic, you're just going to basically take that off and attach it to your rectifier plate and get rid of the, the circuits that do the sensing. So let me get some tools over here and we're going to take this off. We're going to save the screw. We're going to change this to a terminal, I'm gonna reuse the screw and put this in place of the board. And that's all there really is to this. I'm just 
covering all this in case you're not working on a never start about the diodes and the way a battery charger might look if you open it up um, they should all have a circuit breaker you should never bypass that um, once I cut this out the LED is not gonna work we don't need it I mean we didn't have it on these the old battery chargers didn't have one you just knew if you plugged this in you had 12 volts and if you hooked it to a battery you know it's charging and you better remember that you left it on charge or you'll boil them dry so that's we're fixing to make this one like that one let me grab some tools and we'll get this off okay this rectifier plate has a brad and it has a screw which bolts not real clear on what this stuff is i'm no electronics expert but um this thing is bolted because it's got it's this is basically a big heat sink is what the rectifier plate is so this is going to have some uh, uh the uh the grease behind it that keeps it cool but anyway we're going to drill this rivet and uh, take the screw out we're going to save the screw we're going to reuse it so i'm just using an oversized drill to kind of drill out the middle now you can this is aluminum you just cut that off if you want to but this is easier that's all there is to it um don't need really well i didn't need pliers on that last one because it's a lock nut so this should just come loose and it did all right so like i said we're saving the screw and the nut and now we're going to take a look and see where these wires go this thing has a the manual switch is the green wires on this ever start they're just blade connections so we can unplug them now we've gotten rid of two of the wires the other two belong to the led and they're way up in here so what we're going to do is we're just going to clip them. Like I said, this is a one-way street on this conversion. We're not going back to automatic. So we're just going to clip these LEDs. Now the LED is not 12 volts, so you can't just hook it back up and use it as a power light. I don't know what voltage it is. It's probably 5 or something, but um, I tried to use it, and it just burned it up. So I know for a fact it's not 12 volts anyway on your circuit breaker which is important remember do not bypass your circuit breaker on these automatics they have three but you'll notice that two of these are fused together because one protects this board which we do not need so we're done with this and you'll see on an old charger the circuit breaker has two because this didn't have automatic stuff in it so that's just letting you know that this is still going to work without this being hooked up all you're doing is just getting rid of it now we need to put this anywhere on this plate and so we're going to cut it off and i forgot the wire strippers let me go get all that and we'll get the crimpers We'll put this back together and I'll show you it's full, full manual, ready for electrolysis. All right, got the strippers. We're gonna strip us some wire, just a little bit. If you'll notice that tab's missing now. Off camera, I cut that off because I'm weird like that. I like everything to like it not look like a conversion. We're gonna try to at least make it look somewhat um, factory. Um, I told y'all we'd be using that blue connector. Did y'all see what I did with that? Where'd I put it? Here it is. Y'all gotta keep up with me now. I'm getting old and forgetful. Looks like we got enough wire stripped off there. It's just right here at the end. Go ahead and crimp this thing so we can get it back together and give it a test. all right so this is why we saved the nut and the screw so i have got a little brass washer here because my 
um, I connector is a little bit large, so I just found a little brass washer. If you can get the right size to start with, you can bypass this part. Um, plenty of holes to choose from. I'm just going to put it right here. I'm going to put the nut back on it. And then we'll get this thing tightened up. And then before we put this back together, I'm going to show you how to test diodes in case you're, ha you, you're having, you might have trouble with a battery charger. Maybe you want to repair one. Normally, in the order of things going wrong, it's normally going to be diodes first. And then some of the battery chargers have a, up under this, transformer is a thermal it's like a thermocouple it could like if you got this real hot it could burn out i don't even think this has one because i don't see one and so far i've opened up the old one i've opened up another everstar i cannot find thermal fuses on either one of them but i've seen pictures when i was trying to figure all this out that some transformers have a thermal fuse it could be that and then worst case scenario, you burned a winding and you might as well chunk it. And that is what has happened to my trusty old manual charger over here is a winding burned up. So I might try to find a 12 volt transformer. It may not be worth it. Okay, so the conversion's done. Uh, to recap, we took the board out. Cut the LED wires, unplugged the switch wires, took off the uh, circuit breaker wire, and we chunked it. And we simply took our terminal that was plugged in right here, and we just screw it to this plate, because this plate is a connector. Now, here's your diodes. If you want to repair one of these, or you're having trouble getting 12 volts, it may be a diode. And these things, they're called button diodes if you need to order them. You can find them on eBay or Amazon. The way you check them, and you should be able to change them this way, but for some reason it's not quite lining up this hole. Maybe they didn't put it right. But anyway, you can turn it, and now you got access to the contact point. Now I'm going to get the meter. I'll show you how to test this real quick. All right, I've got the meter set on. Mine has diode setting, but basically you're checking ohms. You can just put it on like... It looks like my diode setting is 2K. Um, so the way a diode works is you're going to have, it's, it's like a gate that swings one way. It's like a backflow preventer. It's a one-way valve. So this plate makes contact with the center of this button diode. So you can check the center, which is the plate, to the back, to the terminal. Can y'all see that? Okay. So we're checking the, the plate or the diode to the terminal. And you can see we get nothing on the meter. But if we reverse it, it should give us a reading. If it's don't, it's open. See? So we got, we got a reading. So this diode is good. Um, it's kind of hard to get these things because they're spring-loaded. Kind of at the push them in and turn i'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and i'm gonna flip this one all the way around we're gonna check this diode i just want to check them while we got it open no sense putting it back together and find out there's one bad okay so we checked this one or did we check this one so you got to pay attention now so we're going to turn it this way get access to this we're going to hook it to the middle we're going to get our Black lead, we're going to check it one direction. That's good. We got no reading. We're going to reverse it. That's good. We got a reading. Okay. Now, if you don't get a reading either way, your diode's open. If you get a reading both ways and it goes to zero, they're shorted. Now, you're supposed to be able to pop them things out this hole. And they should be easy to replace. These aren't quite lining up. Anyway, worst case scenario, if you need to change the button diodes, you can drill out the rivet, change your diodes, and just put a, a nut through it. 
uh, just leave the spring because you need tension on it because that's that's why this plate is a connector that's how these button diodes work so in order to get this thing to turn i just use the screwdriver to kind of compress it see now you can turn it and get it just back on the plate like that so we're good to go uh, i'm going to move some of this out of the way and get this cover back on we're going to clamshell this back together and test it okay we're ready to get our rectifier plate back in the cover which it just snaps in and while we got it open we're going to go ahead and do a little check de check be careful this is 110 coming in so you want to make sure that everything is nothing's touching i mean this end i'm not worried about this end i'm worried about but we're gonna set the meter back to 12 volts dc and we're gonna make sure we got 12 volts before we put this thing back together and i guarantee you it's gonna happen all right so i know it's working because I can hear the transformer humming now. This reminds me of this one. You plug it in, you hear the hum, you know you're good to go. So we're going to check. And we got 12 volt. My meter, these, this terminal is dirty. We're going to have to clean these. And we now have 14 volts. So we got 12. You put a load on, it's probably going to drop down to 12. The other ever start read like 13. I tested the load and it was right at about 12 volts. Doesn't matter if it's 12, 13, 14. What we need to worry about, let me unplug this before I electrocute myself. What we need to worry about when we're working on our relics is the amps that we're pumping into those relics. So let me get this thing back together i'm going to tell y'all how this goes back together but we're not going to do it on camera because as you can see these wires have to go just right and i don't want y'all to see me fumbling around on camera trying to get all this back together just just know it does go back together all right and then we'll uh We'll hook up some stuff in an electrolysis solution and fully test it. Okay, I lied. I'm going to show you all something before we put it back together. The circuit breaker on the Everstarts has a slot that it snaps into because you don't want it flopping around in here. Because if it shorts from here to here, it's basically going to override the fact that it's a circuit breaker. So uh, you can now see how these wires kind of snake in and out. I finally got all that done. This one's trying to pop out over here. Kind of have to hold all this back in place. And then you have to line up the slots where your transformer goes. And there's more wires that get in your way. I said I wasn't going to show you all this, but yeah, we're almost there. and that's how you do it all right so we put our four screws back in and let's uh let's electrolysis something okay i don't want this to turn into a full-blown electrolysis tutorial because this is about converting your automatic charger to full manual so you can use it for electrolysis but we're going to demonstrate just because there's people out there the doubting toms that want to see this actually work so watch clip first i'm going to show you all the meter this is the amps so when i unplug it you can see that it drops to zero now i've got everything hooked up i'm fixing to show you that um but when you plug it in you'll see i've got enough laundry booster which is washing soda and i have a little baking soda in there because i ran out of washing soda this is the end of it Washing soda is a little gentler on your relics than 
baking soda, but I've never had trouble using this. Uh, but for like my artillery shells, just as an extra precaution, I use washing soda and it's cheap. So the deal is the more of either one of these you put in your solution, the more amps you're going to pull. And the higher the amps, the stronger you're cleaning it, uh, the more aggressive you're getting with the electrolysis. So I put enough in here to get this to two amps. So when I plug it in, watch the meter, we're going to go to two. I hope you can, may be a glare, but we're on, we're cooking it at two amps. Let me take you off the tripod, get down here and we'll take a look at this. So when I do electrolysis, I do not put my battery charger leads in the solution because eventually it'll eat them up. So I use my sacrificial anode and I always make sure it's tall enough that it sticks out so that I can put my positive lead on it and it not be in the solution. Well, I mean, if this was in there, I, I think this would get eat up really quick. So the negative, same thing. I've just got a sacrificial uh, alligator clip. Ignore this wire, it's just for hanging the relic. Um, I'm just doing an old axe head I dug up. And you can see um, the water's gray because I just stirred up the uh, washing soda. But you can already see some, the bubbles are coming off the axe head. I got washing soda all over this. But anyway, I use a sacrificial clip and keep my battery charger leads out of the solution. So they last longer. I mean, if you don't mind changing them occasionally because you can just cut them off, put new ones on. Hey, that's up to you. I try to make them last Okay, so you can literally mix washing soda as you watch this meter. And the more you pour in there when you're stirring it, you can watch this meter just climb. So like if you had something that you wanted to clean quick and get pretty aggressive, you can run this up to four amps. I don't know if I would go six on anything because I really don't know how long these things would last running six amps. Like on a artillery shell, I mean, they'll be in electrolysis for a month. So you'll be really taxing this if you were cooking that thing at six amps for 30 days. Now this ain't pulling six amps out of your wall. Don't, don't think you're running the electric bill up because remember this is... 12 volt amperage so i'm not real sure how all that works but um we're not pulling two or four or six amps out of this 110 cord we're just uh pulling it on the 12 volt side but um the more solution the more water you have the more soda you have to add and you can just simply start stirring it in while you watch your meter. When it gets to the amperage you want, quit adding it. That's all there is to it. So now you can see that um, I kind of ramble through the conversion, but it's really simple. You're just bypassing that automatic baloney and making this full, full manual. Uh, what I did on the other one is I took a marker and I wrote on it that it's been converted to full manual charger so if i kick the bucket and these end up in a yard sale someone needs to know if they plug it in they're going to get 12 volts immediately so there you go i hope this helps because i know that um, people were having trouble finding these manual chargers and uh, really when mine burned up i wanted to cry because i couldn't find them anywhere i looked and looked um I even, I was almost positive it was a diodes. I repaired it. Um, I didn't even think to check to see if I was getting 12 volts AC out of the transformer. I just assumed it was the diodes. I hooked them up and it still didn't work. That's because transformers burned up. So out of necessity, I figured this stuff out and hopefully it helps you. And we will see y'all in the next video.